The Rock Creek Mine has been a threat to the Cabinet Mountain Wilderness for roughly 30 years. The Cabinet Mountain Wilderness is located in northwest Montana within the Kootenai National Forest. The mine itself is located 13 miles northeast of Knoxon, Montana. Bear Creek Minerals, also known as Kennecott Minerals, were the first to discover the ore beneath the Cabinet Mountains in 1963. The Cabinet Mountain Wilderness was one of the first 10 wilderness designated when the 1964 Wilderness Act was made. However, when the Wilderness Act was being written, the mining interest insisted that pre-existing mining claims be granted a 20-year window to file additional claims. Unfortunately, the Cabinet Mountain Wilderness would be haunted by this. Not much happened until 1979 when the company Asarco began mineral exploration. They found large amounts of silver and copper under the Cabinet Mountain Wilderness. In 1999, Asarco sold its interest to Sterling Mining Company, who changed their name to Revet Minerals in 2003. Sadly, Revet Minerals is a Spokane-based mining company. The Rock Creek Mine would excavate 10,000 tons of copper and silver each day. The majority of the mine would be constructed and operated on Kootenai National Forest land adjacent and beneath the Cabinet Mountain Wilderness, mainly in the Rock Creek area. If the mine is approved, it would create a major industrial facility, which would include the mine itself, a railroad station to move silver and copper, a power line to generate electricity, a mill site, a tailings treatment center, and other associated infrastructure, and all this would be running 24 hours a day for an estimated 35 years. The Rock Creek is home to rare and sensitive wildlife and is also home to three federally listed endangered species, the bull trout, grizzly bears, and lynx. In 1964, Congress passed a Wilderness Act which would set aside primitive and beautiful portions of land. The definition is a wilderness in contrast with those areas where man and his work dominate the landscape is hereby recognized as an area where earth and its community of life are untrammeled by man, where man himself is a visitor who does not remain. A wilderness does not have permanent improvements or human habitation. Wilderness is protected and managed as to preserve its natural condition. Obviously, with the introduction of the Rock Creek Mine, the Cabinet Mountain Wilderness will be no more. Man will dominate the landscape with the introduction of the Rock Creek Mine. The Forest Service is relying on the 1872 Mining Act for issuing mining permits. This act states that mining is the highest use of our public land. The Forest Service is still counting on an act that was passed 140 years ago. Of course, we didn't have the environmental awareness then as we do today. We drastically need a mining reform that includes criteria in regards to aquatic resources and wildlife and the ability to, be, to deny mining projects that threaten sensitive ecosystems and lakes. A mining reform will help prevent the Rock Creek Mine, as well as other mines threatening this ecosystem, such as the Montanor Mine. Grizzly bears are reclusive animals and will not put up with sharing their habitat with a huge mining operation. The mine would be very loud, and the loud sound would stress out the bears and impact their habits and their travel methods. Bears need space and quite a bit of it. They need quietness, and they need a pure environment in which to live and thrive. Places like the Cabinet Mountain Wilderness are an ideal place for grizzly bears. The Cabinet grizzly population is already threatened by the loss and degradation of habitat. With the introduction of the Rock Creek Mine, it will cause a loss of over 7,000 acres of critically important grizzly bear habitat. Rivette's plan of action to replace this loss is setting aside only 2,450 acres. Replacing 7,000 acres with 2,500 is not a fair trade. And how will Revet Minerals plan on getting the current grizzly bears that inhabit this area to the new, much smaller plot of land? With the opening of the Rock Creek Mine, roughly 2,500 to 3,000 people will move into this area in search of mining jobs. This will result in more destruction of bear habitat. More people would be encroaching on the habitat in order to hunt, cut firewood, and recreate. Also, with more people moving in search of jobs means the possibility of more poaching, and with poaching comes loss of grizzly population. Bull trout need clean, cold water, free of fine sediment for their entire life cycle, especially spawning and rearing. The Rock Creek Mine would introduce large amounts of sediment and silt into Rock Creek with the construction of roads, facilities, and excess mine tailings. This would affect the bull trout's reproduction as well as damaging the water quality. 
Sediment in the spawning and rearing habitat increases the mortality of eggs, embryos, and young fish. The Rock Creek Mide would introduce an estimated 400 to 1,400 tons of fine sediment into the Rock Creek per year. Sadly, the introduction of the mine would completely wipe out the bull trout population in this area. Bull trout can also detect metals in the water, and with the introduction of the mine, there would be plenty of metals flowing in the water. With this in mind, the bull trout trying to swim up Rock Creek from the Clark Fork River might just completely avoid Rock Creek. Harlequin ducks are seabirds that require clean, fast-flowing streams for breeding. These ducks are very sensitive to human disturbance, and they breed in a very small number of streams and in the Intermountain West. Every spring, a small number of these ducks fly over from the coast to Rock Creek to nest and breed. Sediment from mining construction would virtually eliminate the duck's aquatic insect food base in addition to the noise and lighting from the mine site could cause breeding females to avoid the area completely. West Slope cutthroat trout would be affected the same way as the bull trout. With lots of sediment entering the creeks and rivers, this would cause a population of the West Slope cutthroat to decline. Also, lynx are one of the three endangered species that call the cabinet wilderness home. The mine would result in a loss of lynx habitat. Specifically, loss of denning habitat would result in a decrease in reproductive success and an increased mortality risk. Likewise, the wolverine would also be impacted with a loss of denning habitat and with the risk of increased mortality and less success in reproduction. Wastewater from the Rock Creek Mine would be required to pass through a water treatment center before discharging into the Clark Fork River as well as the Rock Creek and Libby Creeks. Even with the treatment center, the water that would be discharged would exceed aquatic life standards. Cave-ins are an inevitable consequence of underground mining. Even though the mining may take place 800 feet below ground, it can still have a drastic impact on the lakes, streams, and creeks above. Cliff Lake sits directly above what would be the mining cavity, and because Cliff Lake receives 90% of its water from groundwater, any alteration of the flow would slowly kill this beautiful al alpine lake. Lake Ponderé is designated as special resource water, which is the highest level of protection. It is also called a health and re recreation place. This lake has survived ice ages, floods, and much more. The lake is roughly 1,158 feet deep, which is among the deepest in the country. The Rock Creek Mine would discharge 3 million gallons of polluted wastewater into the Clark Fork River every day. The discharge would contain high amounts of nitrogen, phosphorus, and heavy metals including arsenic, lead, copper, zinc, and mercury. It would flow into Idaho and eventually into Lake Ponderé. The tailing pile would also seep polluted water into groundwater, which would find its way to the lake as well. The Rock Creek Mine would most likely be the end of the Cabinet Mountain Wilderness, which was one of the first ten places listed as wilderness in 1964. This is still one of the most pristine and most wild places left in the nation. There are multiple species that are threatened without the Rock Creek Mine, and with the introduction of it, these animals would surely become endangered. With the Rock Creek Mine, the quality of the water, air, and soil will surely be polluted and greatly affected. The Cabinet Mountain Wilderness is an amazing place. For those lucky enough to see it and spend time in it, know how majestic it really is. To get involved to stop the Rock Creek Mine, you can visit the Rock Creek Alliance website or the Save Our Cabinets website and many other organizations that are dedicated to stop the development of the Rock Creek Mine.